what is your experience, all of you on the on the panel, in terms of the genetic testing? You know, so many of the genetic tests um, that can be offered are offered in broad panels with many, many uh, different um, genes tested and um, uh, a variable cost, but sometimes a significant cost. Um, uh, do you find that the um, SMA or SMN gene testing is readily available, um, reliable um, when done in a targeted fashion rather than as part of a panel? Do you have any sense of the cost? So I think it's really important, especially since the high majority of these are deletions, that this is not something that would be picked up on whole exome sequencing. And I think as more and more people rush to kind of do whole, e whole exome sometime as their first test, I think it's important to remember the disorders that you're missing, and SMA would be included there. Um, and also it's an issue of timing because the, if you just do the SMN1 gene, it can be done quickly. In some centers, we can do it in three days, and time is of the essence because time is motor neuron, whereas the whole exome sequencing can take three months or so, and that's time that you lose looking for things that you might not even identify, as you've pointed out. And I think the other important piece is to really pay attention to what test you are sending. So different laboratories may just test for the double deletion that is responsible for 95% of cases and may not identify carriers. Others may only do deletion testing, um, and others may do deletion testing and then reflex to sequencing if the deletion testing is negative. Uh, so it's very important to kind of be aware of exactly what the test is doing before you send it. Exactly what steps would you take, um, uh, Basil, if you had a patient where you had a high suspicion, say a, um, an older child, a school-aged child with some um, proximal weakness, limb girdle weakness, relatively decreased reflexes, but the initial deletion testing comes back negative, and you still have that suspicion. What are the best steps to take? Um, if, if the testing is totally uh, normal, it does not even show um, one copy of the SMN1 gene. Uh, and I'm saying that because uh, if the result comes back as a child being a carrier, uh, as discussed earlier, we have actually to uh, pursue uh, sequencing of the second allele, the second chromosome, uh, trying to find a small-scale mutation, mm -hmm. either a missense mutation or a microdeletion, microduplication, or a any type of mutation that could, uh, could uh, uh, give us uh, SMA uh, uh, in a compound heterozygous state. Mm -hmm. um, uh, if, if it comes back as the child having uh, two SMN1 uh, copies, uh, there is always uh, the possibility of having um, a small cell mutation that's in a homozygous state. Mm -hmm. But that's so rare that, um, that uh, outs uh, uh, if, you don't if you don't have consanguinity, for example, uh, it's something that uh, uh, most uh, colleagues will not actually pursue any further, uh, but I bring that as being sort of like a rare exception, but something that uh, that I don't think that it should uh, that it is in clinical practice, you know, on a routine basis. Uh, so if the child seems to have a normal test, um, and uh, particularly the CPK is somewhat elevated, I don't think it's a bad idea to uh, think about doing electromyography uh, to see. Uh, whether you have any neurogenic changes or whether you have myopathic potentials where the MG, the MG could be normal. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, the MG is an extension of the physical exam and it could be something that could be pursued in a case like this uh, to, to give you some guidance as to how to uh, proceed in, in, in that case. Now whether you dealing, let's say, with a patient who has a neuropathy mm -hmm. uh, or a patient who has uh, a, an EMG that looks like uh, SMA, uh, in which case the possibility of non-chromosome 5Q SMA comes up, but, th but these are rare, very rare diseases. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I, in my clinic, I have only a couple of patients who have non-chromosome non 5Q SMA. Mm -hmm. um, but um, the EMG will help us if there are myopathic findings, then we may end up doing a muscle biopsy, for example. 